Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iPhone 14 Pro is finally here. We have four different versions this year with two new colors. We have purple, then we also have a new space black, silver, and then gold. And so I thought we'd unbox these, take a first look, and also they come in at the same price as last year. So $999 up to $1,499. But we still have the same storage options as well, unfortunately starting at 128 gigabytes. So it goes from 128 up to one terabyte of storage. Now let's go ahead and unbox these. Now both of these are iPhone 14 Pros with 256 gigabytes of storage. So you can see it says 14 Pro there and the same thing here. Now unfortunately Space Black was sold out. So hopefully I'll get one of those eventually and maybe use that as my main phone. But let's go ahead and open this up to see what it looks like and then we'll get one of them set up and take a closer look. Now let's pull this tab back here and we'll pull the other tab. And then let's do the same on the other one. And there we go. And let's remove the top of the box. So we'll re remove this here. And you can see the two different colors. So again, silver and purple. And now this is going to be my wife's phone. She upgrades every couple of years. And this just gives you an idea of what it looks like. I'm actually not going to set that one up as the 14 Pro I'll be using is the purple one. Although I may stick with the Max this year again, we'll have to see. But as you can see, here's the colors. Let's take the front off though, the cover off the front. And then also the other one. And you can see the little hole punch and then pill shape that Apple calls the dynamic island. It's a kind of a ridiculous name, but they've tried to make it a little bit fun also. And then you can see the overall design here. So on the side, of course, we have our power sleep wake button. On the top, we don't have anything other than a different line for the antennas. On the other side, gotta be careful not to bump those into one another to scratch the displays, but they are ceramic shield. We have our volume buttons and then our silent switch. And then again, we have lightning on the bottom. So you'll see lightning here and then our microphones and then our speakers. As far as an overall size comparison, well, let's set this one aside and I'll bring in the 13 Pro. So here is the 13 Pro and you'll see the camera bump is much larger on the 14 Pro. So you can kind of see that here, but you can definitely see it side by side. It definitely protrudes out a little bit more. And as far as the sides themselves, you'll see the power sleep wake button on the new 14 Pro is a little bit lower, just like the Max model. And then also on the other side, the same is true for the silent switch. It's just moved down ever so slightly. But otherwise, everything is the same other than the colors. We have the same stainless steel band and everything else. Now, the 14 Pro is a little bit heavier this year at 7.27 ounces or 206 grams versus 7.19 ounces or 204 grams. It's not really easy to tell the difference, but of course, we don't have the SIM card tray on this one either, so they've actually made the battery a little bit bigger. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but let's see what's inside the box. Now, inside the box, of course, this year we only have an eSIM in the United States, and so just like the 14 Pro Max, we have a little pamphlet about it saying you no longer need a physical SIM card. Activate your eSIM during iPhone setup. For more information, go to apple.com slash eSIM. We've got our little warranty card and then Apple stickers or an Apple sticker, just one. And then let's put this away. And then we also have our USB-C to lightning cable. I'm thinking next year, maybe we'll go to USB-C to USB-C. That would certainly help with ProRes video. Now let's put this back in the box and this does not have a charger this year. So if you need a charger, that's where our charging partner, Anchor comes in, who sponsored this video. So this video is sponsored by Anchor. If you're looking for an AC adapter for your iPhone, the Anchor Nano 3 is 70% smaller than Apple's 30 watt charger. It features gallium nitride technology and a foldable plug to reduce the size and increase its efficiency. But it can still output 30 watts, so you can charge more devices, including your iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and MacBook Air, all with one charger. There's five fresh finishes to match your style, Aurora White, Phantom Black, Misty Blue, Lilac Purple, and Natural Green. 
Anchor also has a new 541 USB-C to Lightning and 543 USB-C to USB-C cable that are the first to use bio-based materials in a cable. It's the first company to use renewable materials, including sugarcane and corn, to construct the exterior of the cables, and the cables have been proven in a lab to withstand up to 20,000 bends, making it more durable than your typical TPE-based cables. I'll leave a link to both of them in the description so you can check them out. Now, before we turn it on, let's talk about the internals, because this has the new A16 Bionic chipset, which means six core CPU with two performance cores and four efficiency cores, has a five core GPU and a 16 core neural engine with six gigabytes of RAM. Now the display is super bright this year. In fact, Apple claims it's the brightest of any display out there. So we'll turn it on and this is still 120 Hertz display, but has a 1000 nit brightness typically, which means regularly it can go up to that brightness, 1600 nits in peak brightness, and then 2000 nits in peak brightness outdoors. Of course it has HDR and true tone. The glass is ceramic shield, and you can actually remove the rear glass this year to re repair it. So that's a good sign. Of course it has haptic touch and more. So we'll take a look at the display in a moment and the dynamic Island, but let me set this phone up and then we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Now, if you want to see all of the setup and everything else, I showed that in my pro max unboxing where I set up the eSIM transfer and everything. So I showed that in detail in the other video. So If you want to see that, check it out in the other video. Let's go ahead and get this set up. Now the 14 pro is set up and ready to go. I just have the default apps installed with one other. And the first time you boot it up, if you haven't installed any updates or anything, it will tell you there's an important software update. So if we go to general and then about, you can see this actual build number is two zero a three five seven. So this isn't the build we need. There is an update for the 14 pro and pro max and 14 series. And if we go to general and software update, we can see that here and it fixes three thing. So make sure you install this. iMessage and FaceTime may not complete activation. Photos may appear soft when zooming in landscape orientation on iPhone 14 Pro Max and enterprise single sign-on apps may fail to authenticate. So make sure you install this if you haven't when you pick this device up. Also, if you want to set up cellular for the first time and you didn't do that during setup, you want to move over your SIM card or eSIM, all you have to do is go into your cellular settings and then set up cellular. So you'll be able to do that that way. You can move it over. Your carrier should not charge you for it. Although I haven't heard of anyone doing that, but people have asked me about it. Either way, it should just move your physical SIM to a digital SIM, which shouldn't really be a fee, but it could vary based on carrier. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier is the overall battery. The battery in this is a little bit bigger than the 13 pro and it has a 3,200 milliamp hour battery. So you'll see, of course, I just turned it on. So we don't have any data here. And of course, a 100% battery health and our optimized battery charging is on. We'll have new features with iOS 16.1. Also speaking of cellular, it's 5g but no CDMA support this year. We have Wi-Fi 6 with no Wi-Fi 6E, but also Bluetooth 5.3, which is an update. Now it is IP68 certified, six meters for up to 30 minutes, the same thing as last year. Now let's take a look at a few different things I didn't cover in the other video, such as the dynamic island a little bit more. And we'll take a closer look at the camera, but if we turn on silent, you'll see the dynamic island. We'll just call it the notch or I guess Whatever we should call this, I'm not sure. It was the hole punch and pill, but you'll see it changes there. So if I turn on silent. Now, if we go into music, we'll turn the volume down. If I play a song and then swipe home, it will jump up to the top. If we tap on it, it opens back up. If we press and hold, we get our media player. I think that should be reversed. Hopefully they'll change that. And then also maybe if we have that playing, we go in and set a timer. We'll set the timer, we'll hit start, swipe home, and it goes over to the side. This is available in many different modes. I think we'll see a lot more in the future though. So if we unsilent and then silent again, you'll see it pop in there. And then I would imagine it changes. There it goes to music and timer. So it's really neat to have additional apps in here, sort of like an app switcher, but you do have to reach to the top to get to it. So I do like it quite a bit. I think it looks great. And in bright sunlight, it looks okay. 
we're actually in pretty bright sunlight now. It's also an indicator when you have the camera on for different dots of mic and camera use. One thing we definitely need to check is YouTube. Now I checked this on the other video, which this is the other video here, and you can see how it actually intrudes into the dynamic island or the punch in the screen. So you can see it sort of halfway down, similar to what we have on the 14 Pro Max. If I expand it, of course it will expand out and then it sort of takes up that part of the screen. So that could be a problem and let me know if maybe I should make a different resolution where it wouldn't show anymore since I record these in 18 by nine. I could shrink that in where it wouldn't show on the new phones, but let me know your thoughts about that. Also, we need to talk about the always on display. That's a new feature of this display. And if we turn the display off, you can see it. It dims just a little bit down to one Hertz. Now it does adjust with the overall brightness in the room. It seems like at least a little bit when it's darker, it seems to get a little bit darker. So if I turn the lights off, here. Well, you can see it's still a bit bright, but then it dims a little bit. So it definitely fades. If it was dark in your room, turn the light back on the always on display sort of brightens up. So that gives you an idea that it is variable, but it definitely looks like it's on and will be great at night, maybe with an alarm clock set. So that should be a, a nice feature. Of course you can turn it on in your display settings. So if we go to our settings, We'll go to display and of course we have an always on display toggle. So we can turn that off when we lock the screen, it just shuts off now. Of course, to me, I like to use the latest features, so I'll leave it on. Also with the display, we need to talk about PWM or pulse width modulation as the 13 pro did not bother my eyes at all. However, in the 14 pro max video, I wasn't able to detect this at all. And I'll show you that again here. I'll just record this quick. We'll use the 14 pro max to record it. So we'll go into the camera and then we'll go into slow-mo. That's how I normally record it 240 HD, and then we'll hit record. And you can see the display. Now it does not appear to flicker too much. So it may be at an even higher PWM rate, or maybe it's just using DC dimming altogether, but it does not appear to be an issue at all. So this could be great for those of us that no longer have an LCD option. Now let's close music here. We'll stop that. And let's talk a little bit about the cameras as the cameras should get a significant upgrade this year. According to Apple, we have a 12 megapixel forward facing camera. Now that's not new as far as the overall size, but it's an F 1.9 aperture and now has autofocus. Although I thought it had that before. So we'll test that a little bit later. The rear cameras are bumped up to 48 megapixels on the main camera. So 48 megapixels, F 1.78. And then we have a telephoto and an ultra wide. The telephoto is F 2.8 and the ultra wide is F 2.2. So a little bit of a change there with a the telephoto. And of course we have Apple pro raw and this time two times optical zoom and three times. Now, if we go into the camera settings, let's go into settings. We'll go back here, go down to camera under camera. We'll go to formats. You can see Apple pro raw here. And once you update, you'll actually have an option to change between 12 and 48 megapixels. So that's one of the updates included and you don't see it here yet. Now, if we go into the camera, you'll see, we have some new options. So let's bring this in. We'll rotate here and we have one X. Now we have two X, which punches into the sensor and then three times. So we have that as well as macro, which should be improved since the overall sensors have been improved. And then we have the photonic engine. Now I took some photos outside to see what this was like, since I didn't cover that in the, the 14 pro max video. And you can see here with a flower, it's just a normal picture. And then we can go into macro. So it should look as good as before, if not better. And then also I zoomed in using the camera here. So as you can see, here's some trees. And then I zoomed into two X, three X, and then as far as it would go just to see what it looks like. So that gives you an idea. I don't think it's much different than the 13 pro though. And then if we go into video modes here, this is where it's been updated a little bit. So we have video modes and if we go to cinematic, it's been improved up to 4k 30. Now you can see in the upper left. And then we also have a new mode here. So let's go back. So we're in the regular video mode and then we'll go back and you can see we have an action mode now. Now I tested this out. So as you can see here, they're side by side, one without one with action mode and the action mode actually has a lower resolution because it uses that information to sort of process everything. So you have those new modes and cinematic mode should be improved as well. And we'll check that out at the end of the video. So 
that's the overall changes in this particular version of iPhone 14 pro. There's not a whole lot more. It's a pretty big update to the cameras, but we'll have to see if those improve in the future. They could have done 8k. And I think things like live activities as more apps roll out with those with the dynamic Island and change those things should really improve. But so far we haven't seen a whole lot with it. And so that's the iPhone 14 pro. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And I'm actually using the front facing camera of the other 14 pro to film this in cinematic mode in 4k. So let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Of course, if there's anything else you'd like from the full review, let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.